So today I'll be upgrading the Panasonic Toughbook CF-C2 um, laptop with a 256 gigabyte Lexar solid state drive. And there's already eight gigabytes of RAM installed in this, but I'll just show like where to access the uh, RAM sticks in a moment here, just for uh, your own knowledge. And I'm sure there are other videos on YouTube demonstrating how to do this. It's not that difficult. Um, I think I'll install Windows 10 as well after. And yeah, this is how you do it. So we'll flip over the tough book. And first, what we would want to do is remove the battery. So to do that, you can press down this little button here to release the battery lock and comes out just like that. And next you need a smaller style uh, Phillips head screwdriver and we'll remove one screw right here and I'll just show where the RAM access point is, at least for one of them. So one stick is here underneath this lid and that's a 4 gigabyte DDR3 1600 megahertz RAM stick. And the other one, which I will not be demonstrating in this video, uh, but you can take this thing apart a little bit further and get access to the other RAM stick underneath the keyboard. Just in case you need to or you want to for some reason. Uh, there's lots of other features on this laptop that I'd like to uh, explore and go over. So I'll also be doing a performance test and maybe like gaming or whatever everyday use uh, for this laptop because it's pretty cool. So to get to the SSD, you actually don't need a screw, a screwdriver rather. You can just pull this. There's another tab here that you can pull to, pull to unlock. And then you just pull here to release the hard drive caddy. And there's a little plastic, or sorry, there's a little metal aluminum tray here. And so the caddy is held in uh, with little tabs here, 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 and here that you can depress slightly in order to uh, get it out. Oh, there's one here too. So might ha help to use both hands and I'll time lapse this part because this is kind of uh looks like I'll have to fiddle with this a little bit okay so we have this little ribbon connector with the SATA ports to uh this port here, which connects to the motherboard, I'm guessing, in here. So we'll mount the SSD like so. All right, so seeing as there doesn't seem to be a place to fasten the SSD in with screws, I'm going to just use a piece of double-sided tape and we'll place it right here so at least it's not moving around and making a tiny bit of noise. Uh, while you're handling the laptop. And you'll notice that the connection to the motherboard, in case you pulled it out like me, it fits into the plastic casing just like this, and I'm guessing that'll be enough to uh, guide it in place there we go. And the ribbon cable looks like it's neatly folds down just like that. I'm trying to be a little bit gentle here as I've never uh, worked on this laptop before. I'm not exactly sure what to expect outside of uh, regular, regular laptop things. So anyway, let's see. Yeah, we're good to plug it in. Great. Put this cover back on. 
And I have to say that this laptop does seem pretty durable just by handling it alone. All right, so we'll plug the battery back in. And I'll grab my USB with Windows 10 right here. This thing is in really good condition. I got lucky. All right. So I'm not entirely sure what the boot menu key is, but I believe we might get a splash screen here. I know F2 enters the BIOS. So at the very least, I can enter that. All right, I did give this, let this thing uh, sit and charge for a little while. And I have tested booting to BIOS, but just to be safe during Windows 10 install, I'll plug it in. So the power button is right here on the front. It's a laptop <clears throat> and it, you just have to push it over like this and we'll hit F2. Okay, my apologies for the brightness, but I think that's the best we'll get for viewing this screen without lines on it. So we can see that the eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM is recognized and we have an Intel Core i5-4310U CPU, 2.0 gigahertz. And I've already gone through and made sure uh, things like Bluetooth are enabled. So we'll go to the uh, boot option. Number one is the USB key, so that's fine. And number two is the hard disk, so that's okay too. If I don't see, well, I'm gonna go check online or in here to see if I can find what the uh, boot menu hotkey is. Okay, so it looks like pressing the escape key will bring up a boot menu to see if that's true. Awesome. And there it is. So that's cool. Um, yeah, here we go. We'll install Windows 10 and I'll do a brief portion of the video will be dedicated towards uh, just showing how I uh, wipe hard drives and solid state drives from command prompt well in the uh, Windows 10 install process. All right, so again, I apologize for the lines here. I can't seem to get good viewing angle. Um, so to access command prompt, you can see like all these partitions here. Uh, we just want to get rid of all of those and start fresh. So to access command prompt and disk partition, you can hold down shift and press F10. And then I'll pull up command prompt. And once here, you can type in D-I-S-K-P-A-R-T, all one word, hit enter, um, and type list, disk, two words. And here we can see disk zero is the solid state drive. Disk one is the USB. Want to select disk zero, type that out, press enter, and you can type clean, Disk part succeeded in cleaning this disk. Great, exit, exit. And once back at the screen, we can hit refresh. Here we go. We'll come back once Windows is installed. All right, Windows 10 is installed and looking pretty good so far. So I'm gonna run some Windows updates and probably install some uh, Games off of Steam um, applicable to the integrated Intel HD 4400 graphics. Um, we'll maybe test the battery life and see how the touchscreen can handle different games and uh, maybe drawing or something like that, uh, which is the extent of which I will use this. And I'll also test out uh, both of the uh, cameras, one up here and one on the underside. Anyways, stay tuned. Between this, I went further and upgraded to Windows 11 just to try it out. All right, so I got my gaming SSD that I use for testing plugged in, and I'm gonna try out some Left 4 Dead 2.
All right, so this laptop has Intel HD 4400 graphics. I'm not expecting a huge gaming experience, but it's something I would want to do with a laptop that I own, so I may as well test it out. So right now we're averaging about, hovering in the 50s, 50 frames per second. Uh, we get down to the 40s. Still pretty pretty smooth gaming experience. Um, maybe I'll play with the graphics for a second to see if I can get a higher frames per second. All right, so by toning down the resolution um, from the native 1366 by 768, I am able to uh, generate better frames per second, but Honestly, uh, it was a smooth experience before playing a uh, full screen and not windowed like this, so I would just stick with that. But Left 4 Dead 2 definitely works for this, and uh, you can check that off. Alright, so I have Star Wars Dark Forces loaded up. Um, obviously, it doesn't take much at all to run this game, but it's just an example that you can still play a large variety of retro games, uh, lower quality games. I don't think this game will, or this laptop will effectively run like uh, games like Counter Strike very well. Uh, it does play Left 4 Dead 2 fine, but I would probably stick to something that will perform better so you have a better experience. And especially with the tough book where you might be. Uh, offline or like uh, not playing a first person shooter that's uh, online with other people at least not like Counter-Strike uh, you know you can play this remote somewhere while you're on the job well not on the job but maybe like on your break time all right I thought I would try out Team Fortress 2 um, I've never played this game before but I do know that it's pretty well optimized for a variety of different systems and you know what it looks pretty good and um, yeah I think this game would work perfectly fine on this laptop I'm just gonna figure out what to do All right, I mean, this game works perfectly fine. Of course, I would be remiss if I didn't test out the touchscreen with at least one game, so I'm just gonna play chess. So previously I did mention that I test out the camera. Here's the front facing one on the top of the LED screen. And I believe the other one is more uh, suitable for tablet mode. Yeah. So that is on the underside. Oh, if you flip it this way. Cool. So anyway, Hopefully that gives you an idea of um, not only how to install the SSD, but how this thing might perform with some light gaming and uh, other software. Somebody else probably has a different idea in mind for the application of this tough book. Um, I know it's more for field work and stuff like that. So anyway, if you have any comments, leave them below. And if you want to share your experience, I'd really like to hear it. Otherwise, I'd probably refer you to uh, Bob's computer, or I forget what it's named exactly, but they have uh, seem to specialize in tough books. So I'll leave a link in the description below, and thanks a lot for watching otherwise. Hopefully this helped you out.